The Protection of Personal Information Act, Poppy, takes effect on July 1st, a move that will compel all businesses and organizations to protect personal information and prevent it being exposed and disseminated to unauthorized individuals and entities. The ramifications for not adhering to the act could include a fine of up to 10 million rand, prison terms of between 1 and 10 years, or both. In our social newscast with me, Sam Marshall, brought to you by socialtv.co.za, we chat to Bianca Nietling, who's a former compliance manager at Bidvest Bank and has co-designed a new Poppy Act e-learning course with New Leaf Technologies. Bianca, thank you very much for your time. Before we talk about, obviously, the deadline that's now officially here and what that means, maybe one step back, what is the Poppy Act? Sure. Uh, so in a nutshell, it's a South African law that is going to give effect to our constitutional right to privacy. Uh, it also sets the conditions under which public and private bodies may process personal information and what their obligations are to protect that information. Now, you know, Bianca, that we've been hearing on South African radio stations, we've been hearing Poppy Act, Poppy Act, Poppy Act. But how does it apply to oneself? So the act um, refers to us as individuals, um, as a data subject. So that would be you and me as a natural person um, in our day-to-day capacities um, and our privacy. So it applies to our personal information being processed and what our rights and obligations are in this regard. So, for example, um, we have the right to know who is processing our information and for what purpose. Or if there was a breach in um, protecting our personal information, what steps can we take to protect ourselves from further harm? And then we also have the right to correct, update, or ask for the deletion of our personal information if it is being held by a responsible party. And then we also have uh, the right to lodge a complaint with the information officer of a responsible party or the regulator if um, we are in a situation where our personal information is being processed unlawfully. Now, many people would ask, Bianca, and I don't know if it's a fair question, and you can obviously um, call me out on it if, it's a, if, if the question doesn't make sense, but somebody would go, why did we need this act in the first place? What was happening in the industry that required us to, to develop a Poppy Act? So I think the first of all, there was no, um, no one piece of legislation to protect our constitutional right to privacy. And they, if there's no law to protect a constitutional right, then we're failing, okay? So I think that is the first thing. So what they try to do is to follow international um, standards and put in place a piece of legislation that's going to cater to that um, that right. That's the the first thing. And then um, because there were bits and pieces of um, data protection requirements in various laws like electronic communications and transactions or the Consumer Protection Act, but there was no um, body to actually enforce um, this right, they had to develop the act to to put teeth, um, if I can call it that, to the the constitutional right and to make sure that people um, are processing your information in a manner that is lawful and that we understand. The way I understand this, Bianca, if somebody contravenes the act after the 1st of July, and Mm -hmm. one of them could be, for for example, an unsolicited phone call or um, getting access to one's information in whichever manner, um, might be legal that you could face up to a 10 million rand fine or a prison term from one to 10 years yeah so i think there's there's obviously different um non-compliance or uh areas to the law so they they might not necessarily apply a 10 million rand fine to unsolicited marketing um, but something like a data breach to a cybersecurity attack where hundreds of thousands of 
uh, data subjects are impacted because the responsible party didn't put um, adequate security measures in place, that would carry a 10 million rand administrative penalty. But um, if I could say, uh, let's, for instance, say an employee um, purposely um, sold information about a data subject um, for nefarious reasons, that person in the individual capacity could face uh, imprisonment of up to 10 years. Um, so the, the 10 million rand penalty is more of an administrative penalty for not complying with the Act, but there are certain uh, provisions that would carry a penalty and imprisonment for individuals not adhering to the requirements. So, Bianca, just for more clarity's sake, um, and, and, and thank you for being so clear in your responses. But from a clarity perspective, so if I had to use an example, I'm sure that uh, as the as the co-designer of the new Poppy at e-learning course that you're doing with, with New Leave, you'll have the answer. When an organization that has a newsletter and there are 15, 20, 30,000 people on that newsletter and it gets hacked, mm-hmm that could pull, get the company into trouble, right? Especially if they have not followed Absolutely. proper security procedures. Absolutely. That would that would put them in contravention and could get them a maximum of a 10 million rand administrative penalty. What happens after the 1st of July when an unsolicited uh, sales call comes? So I think there's, there's two scenarios that people have to understand. So the first is if you are getting a direct marketing um, communication from a responsible party of which you are already the customer they have to they they have the right to contact you okay but you also have the right as a data subject to opt out of those direct marketing communications and they have to give you this opportunity at every interaction you have with them so that's the first scenario and the second scenario would be is that if someone got your details um, and you didn't provide it with them, they have the right to ask you if you would like to opt in to those communications. If you do not respond um, with an opt-in response, then they are not allowed to contact you again. Should they do it over and over via SMS or phone calls, um, then you have the right to complain to the responsible party's information officer or to the regulator and that would then launch an investigation and possible penalties could could occur after that. So the so Bianca, the, the idea that somebody, for example, takes your email address and includes it into a newsletter um, without your permission from after the 1st mm-hmm. of July would get that company into trouble? Absolutely. If you complain, then they have to they have to fix it, and if you are not happy with the way that they do that, then you can complain to the regulator who will investigate the matter, and they can get into serious trouble. Um, final question. So you have now partnered, you're the former head of compliance uh, at Bidvest Bank. You've now co-designed this new Poppy Act e-learning course, which just speaking to you, I think everybody has to do, by the way. Sure. Um, so I think most importantly, we decided to partner with New Leaf Technologies um, in designing this course because they are experienced in making e-learning work for everyone. So um, the course itself is an introductory course, but it provides the learner with all the tools they need to understand what the act requires of them. And it will explain to them roles and responsibilities as um, an employee of a responsible party, as the information officer, or as a data subject themselves. And the the great thing about um, New Leaf New Leaf Technologies is that the way they design the course is they take the legal wording and they make it practical. So the learner will hear. The content they will read it um, they can see it because there's nice pictures and videos and practical examples but they also ensure that the the content sticks through an assessment at the end of the course um, and that's really important because you don't want to walk away thinking I just spent an hour of my life watching a video and I didn't learn anything 
it really is a great introduction to the Act and the roles and responsibilities expected of everyone, not just the responsible party, but the data subject as well.